Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is how to properly run a vacuum, how to connect into the vacuum pump, how to connect into the system for maximum efficiency, and how to end up breaking the vacuum with liquid refrigerant into the liquid line. So this is an outdoor condensing unit here, and you have the line set running in the inside. Here you have a 6 CFM vacuum pump with 3 eighths out of the top and quarter inch out of the side. So we have our cooled wrench uh, adapter right here, and we have our 3 8 to cooled wrench adapter on here. So you want to pull a vacuum from both sides, and before we get started, we're going to go ahead and pull the trader valves out of these two service valves. If you see service valves that end up having a high stem on it under once you take the cap off, then those are likely ones that do not have valve cores or trader valves, whatever you'd like to call them. These ones have a female Allen slot in them, and so these ones actually have valve cores. We're going to take our valve core removal tools. These are the Appian uh, valve core removal tools, and we're going to take the back out of them in order to pull the Schrader valves out. We want to make sure that we pull these Schrader valve valve cores out just to make sure that we don't restrict the vacuum. All right, so there. There it is. I'm going to pull that off and I'm going to put that in the valve cap. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put these valve cores back in after we get our vacuum done and after we break the vacuum with refrigerant. So this is the way that I like to do it, and uh, I just wanted to go ahead and go over this process. A little dab of refrigerant oil uh, doesn't hurt on your grommets there. On this one, I make sure that this does not have a valve core in the side right here. So there's no valve core here and no valve core here. All right, we have that snug on there. Then we're going to take our second valve core removal tool. We, we make sure that the back is out, out of it. And we're going to leave the valve core in the side of this one, although this is not needed. We're going to take our vacuum gauge right here. This is a CPS model. This is a single port. I have a valve cap on this side, and we're going to connect in here. Now we're going to take our 3 8 to quarter inch hose, and we're going to attach it into here. You don't want to tighten them too, too much, but we're going to tighten it just enough. It's going to hold it in place for us. I typically end up pointing this upwards, but just for the sake of this video, I have it horizontally so that you can see this. Just so you know, you have access to this valve down here. You can turn this off, and you can turn this off. Make sure to leave your valve core in on this side. We're going to take the back off. We're going to leave this cap on. And we're going to connect our cooled wrench hose onto here. So with this method, you don't have to have your refrigerant manifold set, okay? That's just ends up adding possible other leaking points. So we're just using this two hose setup. And what's going to happen is once we reach the required vacuum level, we're going to turn the valve off here and the valve off here. And then we're going to shut the vacuum pump down. And then we're going to read our micron level and make sure that it does not rise above 500 microns. After it does not rise past 500 microns, then we're going to valve or micron gauge off 
and then what we're going to do is we're going to add our liquid refrigerant into the liquid side here once again with these valves off so you know the reason that we're not breaking the vacuum by opening up the service valves is that these service valves are actually already open they're already back seated all the way up and this would replicate uh, some type of replacement inside the outdoor unit where you actually need to vacuum something in the outdoor unit such as the compressor or something like that that's why we're breaking the vacuum with liquid refrigerant into the liquid line. Now we're going to go ahead and turn on the vacuum pump. We want to make sure that we're on the micron setting and you see our micron level is going down. Now that we're at 250 microns, we're going to go ahead and isolate the vacuum pump. Now we're going to go ahead and see if this micron level rises. We turn the vacuum pump off by turning this valve off here and this valve off here. We still have access into the system through our micron gauge right here. We're going to let this sit for about five minutes and make sure that it does not go up. If it does go up, then that means that we have a leak or there's still moisture in the system. If it continues to go up and up and up and up and it doesn't stop, then that is definitely an indication that you have a leak. But prior to doing this vacuum pump, you would have pressure tested with nitrogen. You would have already pressure tested below the design pressure of the system. The design pressure of the system can be found on the low side rating plate. So that's the evaporator coil rating plate. So after you do the pressure test, if it's a single component you're changing out in the system, it's recommended that you do an oil blowout so you don't have a glob of oil trapped in the system moving back and forth while you're trying to pull a vacuum. Then you're pulling a vacuum from both sides and making sure you are below the 500 micron level. It held for about seven minutes now, and we're going to go ahead and weigh in the liquid refrigerant into the liquid side. So what we have to do first is shut off our micron gauge. So these Appian valve core removal tools are actually vacuum rated down to 20 microns. So we're going to go ahead and disconnect our micron gauge. And now we're going to weigh liquid refrigerant into the liquid side. Another thing worth mentioning is that these two vacuum hoses right here do not have valve core depressors in them. All right, that would restrict the flow of the vacuum, so they don't have that. Okay. Now we're going to attach this, though it has to have a valve core depressor, onto the Schrader valve. So we're still not attaching into our manifold set yet. Then you're going to look at the rating plate on the unit to see how much refrigerant it's calling for. And most units come with enough refrigerant for the evaporator coil and 15 feet with a line set. So any additional line set, you're going to have to add that refrigerant as well. Or you can do that when you're actually charging the system when it's on. So this unit's calling for r 4 a refrigerant. I'm only going to weigh about a pound in. But just so you know, you can weigh anywhere from a pound, or you could weigh 14 pounds, whatever you need, uh, just as long as you weigh it in as liquid into the liquid line and that you are under a deep vacuum. If you tried to put it in as vapor, you're not going to get very much in. You might get 8, 10 ounces, and that's about it. Now we're going to go ahead and add our refrigerant.
before we screw this in all the way and depress in the trader valve, we're going to go ahead and turn our scale on. We're going to zero it out. And you see we have zero pounds. Okay, here we go. So now we're going to go ahead and purge the air out. We're going to open this up a little bit. Okay, and there we go. Now we're weighing refrigerant right into the system. So we're just going to weigh one pound in. Okay, uh, but that's how you do that. And you can verify on your micron gauge that no pressure has entered it just by it still reading the micron level. Sometimes I like to just go ahead and disconnect this. Before even weighing the refrigerant into the liquid line. So say you were installing a new unit and these valves were front seated. What would happen is it's the same exact process basically. Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to get it down to the 500 micron level, then you're going to close this valve off and this valve off. You're going to check to make sure that you're maintaining a 500 micron level with this valve open. Then before you open these valves, you, you just make sure that you shut this off to the micron gauge. And if you want, you can even disconnect your micron gauge just, for, just to make sure that it doesn't get any refrigerant in them. Then you can go ahead and open up your service valves and depending on the manufacturer, uh, some manufacturers want you to open the suction line first, some manufacturers want you to open the liquid line first, but that's another discussion. So now we're going to go ahead and disconnect our setup. I'm going to show you how to put everything back to where you have Schrader valves located in here and in this service valve. Let's first disconnect our refrigerant line right here. We can make use of the refrigerant that's still in this line while we're charging the refrigerant into the system. We just attach this into our manifold gauge set. No refrigerant is coming out because you have your valve in the off position. Here's our valve core on the end here. Make sure that you have this nut all the way forward. I'm going to open that up. I'm going to purge any air out. All right, so now our valve core is in. We're going to go ahead and disconnect from here. Our next one. purge any air that's in this out. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and put this valve core back in. Then we can just take this off right here. I'm just doing it this way so you can see it. And that's it. So now you're ready to hook your manifold gauge set into this. Then turn the unit on and go ahead and check the refrigerant charge in subcooling if you have a TXV or superheat if you have a piston.
So you know, I added the tools used in this video down in the description below if you're looking for them. And if you want to support the HVAC channel and the making of these HVAC training videos, check out the Patreon page where you can also find additional training there. That's located in the description below. Hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.